Today, my dear friends, we have one of the most eminent personality who has very nearly, nearly 36 years of his life, he worked for conserving nature and the upliftment of the greenery of India. Today, we have Dr. N. Krishna Kumar IFS, Indian Forest Service Officer, right, who worked as a principal chief conservator of forest Tamil Nadu. Sir is one of the known names when it comes for conservation. Right. He has almost left so many positive footprints in the society. Right. To tell you a few or mention few, right. if at all if you would have visited uh, Wanderlur Zoo or Aringir Anna means park, right, you would have almost come across this butterfly conservation center. If you ask that who is the man behind the setting up this conservation center, it is Dr. Krishna Kumar who will be almost addressing this uh, session, my dear friends. Right. Not only this one particular almost uh, conservation center, what uh, Dr. Krishna Kumar has said, he has left so many positive imprints, right, when it comes for conservation of the forest and the conservation of the nature, right. 36 long years he has dedicated for the upliftment of the same. Sir, on behalf of Officers IAS Academy, right, I take the privilege of welcome you, right, and uh, it is pleasure, right, you addressing the students for another one hour, sir. Welcome, sir. Thank you, Mr. Cherry. Uh, right. It's wonderful to be with you this hour to discuss whatever I have learned in forestry. Sure, sir. Yeah. Uh, it will be our pleasure to learn from your experience and learning, sir. Thank right. you. Sir, out of curiosity, I just wanted to ask you, sir, right, what exactly prompted you or what exactly inspired you to become an IFS officer, sir? Yeah, that's a very interesting question. Everybody will have some, you know, props to get into some service. I had this passion for wildlife, bird watching, butterfly watching from the school days and also from uh, my college days. I studied in Coimbatore in a school called Stainside School and then went on to do my post graduation in Government Arts College. During our uh, college days, there used to be a club called the Wildlife Youth Club run by the Forest Department. The Wildlife Youth Club uh, used to induct 10 students uh, through an examination the Forest Department used to conduct and those who get uh, into it are uh, taken around the various sanctuaries and national parks those days. So I used to uh, get the opportunity to, I have in fact rather seen all the sanctuaries and national parks of Tamil Nadu even before I got into service. And so those are small little elements um, which initiated me and then of course I had also interacted with DFOs those days and uh, then I thought probably to get into it one needs to get into Indian Forest Service and uh, that is one thing. Then uh, the other part when I finished my uh, post graduation in zoology I went I joined the Loyola College under Dr. Anandakrishnan who was the, is a very known entomologist uh, and were a person an authority on trips in India as one group of insects and uh, then I also had a small opportunity of wor working with Bombay Natural History Society and uh, having um, been working in Coim Point Kalima Sanctuary where we were in involved in the ringing of birds and study on migratory birds. So altogether I had a science background uh, and this passion to work in wildlife. Then someone said that the best thing for a person like you, why don't you try your uh, uh, IFS exam, Indian Forest Service and uh, that really initiated me. Then I came to Chennai. Um, and started preparing and I think uh, got into it God's grace and all blessings of parents and everyone. Right, sir. That's great to know, sir. If I can consolidate what inspired you, it's nature itself, sir. Thank you. <laughs> right, sir. So somewhere I just uh, went through an article regarding you and uh, I happened to read, uh, read that uh, you had a very, it means uh, you had an opportunity to have a trek uh, with one of the most prominent environmentalists, or to be very precise, uh, who's uh, very popularly called as Birdman of India. Right. Uh, what exactly was your experience having a very small trek with uh, right, Dr. Salimani? Right. Uh, what exactly is that uh, experiment? I mean, sorry, the experience what you have. Sir. I told you this Wildlife Youth Club uh, took took me around. I had, uh, um, when, when we go around to various sanctuaries and national park, a forester or ranger used to guide us as college students. They used to tell us a little bit of taxonomy, birding, uh, everything was done. But after my post graduation, when I joined BNHS, I was posted to a place called Point Kalima Sanctuary, Nagapatnam, Kodikarai, 
precisely and our idea uh, the, the study there was studying on the migratory birds birds which used to come from russia and siberia in one of those uh, camp days uh, dr salim ali came there and i had the opportunity of uh, walking along with him for half a day knowing what a disciplined person he was his interest his passion his commitment in fact i had uh, once even uh, talked to the hindu about it i gave him his own book salim ali's handbook of birds got an autograph out of it and there were certain things to uh, observe in such people i had uh, seen mr m krishnan once uh, when he had come to the forest I had gone on crocodile lake collection with uh, mr romulus vitakar so these are small things that really take you uh, and then uh, uh, enrich and enliven in your uh, Uh, passion also so i should say that uh, walking with these people really uh, makes you feel that nature is everything in life and today you are you are witnessing that i think man cannot forget nature we really need nature and it is youth who has to uh, support us to take nature to its original sustainable uh, status right sir as you well said uh, if man forgets nature nature will automatically forget man right sir Uh, since you are talking about this migratory birds, today we have uh, the modern technology. We have this uh, GPS tracking system. Uh, but when I talk about few decades ago, we do not have all these modern technology to track these migratory birds. How exactly? What what that means? Uh, how exactly it was made possible to track these birds? Sir? Yeah. Those days, um, you know, we had uh, very simple methods. we were uh, five or six research scholars working in uh, with bombay naturalist society in point kalima sanctuary what we used to do is at at 5 o'clock in the morning they used to drop us somewhere in an uh, in a terrestrial area where the bush birds all come migratory birds come or sometimes into a uh, jeel a water body and uh, then we look for birds we also set small uh, what is called as nets and these birds come and fall into the net we are supposed to collect the birds then bring them into our field there itself in the at the spot we measure various parameters like the beak, the beak length the wing span the leg uh, length and then certain parameters the body weight etc and then we also do this uh, uh, ringing of these birds a small aluminium ring is attached indicating bnhs and the number etc and then the bird is uh, safely released 895 to 98% of the birds one or two may die even then uh, we will do the tax on uh, taxidermy of that so that really used to be another job once in a week and then releasing the bird the bird will fly you know, on its own migratory course and um, sometimes we get those days only letters or maybe a telephonic call from siberia or from the other field stations in europe telling us this particular bird this particular number has uh, tra- tracked back and come to the same place then we get to know roughly the number of days taken for its migration and then what is that time if they take the body weight etc they also indicate what it is so we get to know whether it is lost body weight etc and what is the change that has taken in its plumage in its uh, rough structures etc so these were the ways of uh, studies but that itself paved way for a deeper understanding of uh, my migration to a large extent right sir it was excellent to know about it sir thank you sir uh, you have been in the service for uh, past 36 years uh, it's really a long journey and the majority of our life we have almost uh, devoted to uh, the service called as indian forest service right if that is the case uh, what exactly you expect from the young officers who enter the service yeah uh, forestry service i should tell you is an awesome service a wonderful service an excellent service i really do not don't have adjectives to tell because it's very rewarding and challenging service and you know it's a, it's a composite uh, management challenge that we need meet in the service for example one might think that forest is just nothing but the duty is only protection policing work it is not like that forestry today is a very big subject and we are very well tuned to these subjects in our uh, academy the um, at uh, the at masuri deradun and we are really uh, given a good grinding so we get to understand how natural resources have, be, have to be managed because we learn urban forestry rural forestry we learn forest protection tribal development agroforestry then uh, science and technology involved in forestry we also have to understand research we have to understand extension and a whole lot of subjects because natural resource management like forest is a very very uh, sensitive subject it, it is all full of science and technology and uh, this is the big thing that uh, students have to really contribute 
uh, we definitely need uh, students from all streams to join the service because it is uh, today uh, a, a very very professional subject it requires a lot of uh, input energy uh, inertia from youth so you know young for youngsters i would say this is the best service because uh, all services are good but here is a service where you are paid to be with nature instead of you be you really paying to go and see nature that this is something great a unique opportunity right so uh, since uh, you told that it means uh, uh, students from uh, right many walks of life uh, should enter this service right uh, what exactly is the basic overview of this service or uh, let me put it this way who exactly can enter this service is this service uh, open to all streams of subject or only the limited uh, streams of students can enter the service yeah so students from science stream mathematics engineering they all enter uh, maybe uh, the hardcore art students are not able to but i think even for them some discussions are going on i understand but uh, by and large during our days it was um, in the 82 when i joined the forest service and even earlier it was mostly botany and zoology students who used to enter but today we find a lot of engineers also coming in students with physics background chemistry background and good lot of engineers from iit kanpur karakpur all these places they come so this what is what is really required is the good grinding that we get in our um, academy uh, in uh, dehradun and then the learning through your run of your as you work with the forest department on the site learning i always say that uh, the best of learning um comes from books but then the most of the hard learning comes from the field so my seniors always say you have to soil your boot forest department requires that you walk in the forest you talk to the forest you smell the forest you feel the forest you understand forest because forest is such a beautiful thing that you as you go in you learn it's an open book it's a nature's wonder that because every day learning every hour learning and uh, this is what i really gained from my 36 years of service Really and that's why i say it is a good service for youngsters those who have the passion for nature and to be with nature and those who love nature it's fantastic sir so out of curiosity uh, so what wrong if at all if a student if a, a student enters this ifs service right he gets qualified as an ifs officer what exactly will be the starting rank which he will be entering sir and uh, if at all if he is entering at a very young stage right what exactly will be the highest rank or position one can reach yeah he the, the indian forest service officer when the moment uh, after the training uh, in dehradun and the masuri they come back to the they are allotted their cadres and when they come to the cadre they join as uh, assistant conservators of forest training which is probably for a year and less wherein they are exposed to i'm telling you particularly during our days where you get your 6 uh, months of range training you have your attachments with your district forest officer you have attachment with the district collector you have attachment with the district police officer with the judiciary wing and then you are exposed to the forest corporations working overall uh, as an acf gives you a good understanding that's your training part and then with 6 months of your range training you are supposed to be attached to a ranger or in certain places on independently on your own you administer a range because that is the basic unit of forestry administration is the range range office management so he gets to know all about range office management before he becomes a dfo and then after uh, afterwards after by which time it's almost 4 years so at the end of 4 years this uh, person the officer is uh, posted as dcf from acf he moves to the next level called deputy conservator of forest uh, that as a deputy conservator of forest he is either posted to a territorial today mostly the territorial divisions as district forest officer and this person is exposed to all the nuances of the forestry in the district because um, it is all based on the uh, forest cover in a district suppose you are posted some in the western ghats district i think all, most of the district in tamil nadu or kerala they all have enough forest so you will have to probably and in the administration the division has many range officers maybe 5 uh, to 7 range officers depending on the um, extent of the forest cover in the particular division and then you have the whole paraphernalia of hierarchy the foresters the gu- forest guard then the watchers and so on so the dfo starts is functioning there are the deputy conservator of forest uh, going and uh, going to the forest understanding the problems of the forest getting involved in the forest protection getting involved in, in the development activities then he has to probably attend a lot of meeting with this conservator of forest who sits again as his unit head then he has to attend the district uh, collectors meeting so it is uh, 70 to 80% of field work 
or uh, rather little 60 to 70 percent and then around 30 percent of good office work also i would always say uh, it is like the two eyes you know the officer has to balance between the office work as well as the field work to understand everything after the deputy conservator of forest maybe he puts in around eight years of service he becomes a conservator of forest okay and then from the conservator of forest he slowly moves into a supervisory an advisory a guiding profession so from an implementation conservator also does implementation because he has four or five dfos under him and because he's a circle level officer so after serving as a conservator for again another five to six years of service this person becomes the chief conservator of forest from the chief conservator he moves to the additional principal chief conservator from additional principal chief conservator you become the principal chief conservator because the state has around four or five principal chief conservators uh, some of them are in charge of forest corporations some of them are handling issues like social forestry planning and development and things like that and then the um, uh, apex scale which is called the principal chief conservator of forest and head of forest force is the top brass in the promotion that a young officer can aim to become if you are interested in government of india services you can go on deputation you can also become the dg forest which is equivalent to the principal chief conservator of forest sometimes uh, you want to work in the government of india there are opportunities to go and work in the ministry of environment and forest and uh, climate change i also work in other de other departments on deputation today a lot of our uh, ifs officers are doing excellently well in uh, many other uh, departments at the state level as well as with government of india at the uh, joint secretary level after empanelment they go and work and uh, contribute significantly maybe water resource ministry tribal welfare ministry they are all there contributing uh, to uh, uh, the national development so thank this you. is in in short the hierarchy of an officer thank you thank you for giving the complete the structural hierarchy means uh, the picture is there in front of us sir. so thank you so much uh, for uh, delivering thank you.